it is a beautiful day in Rackland because we have a new flagship amp from Zuta Amplification. It is the Zuta GBG120. Uh, that is Zuta. If you haven't heard of Zuta, it's a Swedish company. Um, the head of Zuta is Baskim, and he is a big Viking of a man, but like the sweetest dude ever, and just so passionate about amps and the amp community and just wants to push everything along and keep driving uh, amp design forward. And that love and passion really comes through in the GBG120. It's a spare no expense amp. I mean, the design is really tight. When you look inside the lid, it is a thing of beauty. We're talking about 19 inch rack format. I mean, Who's putting out 19 inch rack format amps? You gotta beg people to put out a rack format amp. So Zuta hears your cries, rack people. So what we're looking at here is a four channel, many mode, uh, state of the art amplifier. It's hard to break it down into like, well, what is its one thing? It's not. I could actually probably do three launch videos for this and they would all be different. I could do one as like a LA studio thing. I could do one as like a rootsy classic rock thing. And then I could do one as like a full balls out metal thing. Uh, so we're, let's see what we can get through today without me melting your brain with just facts about how this works. A couple things right off the bat is uh, it's not light. It, it, it has mega big ass transformer in it. Um, it's heavy. It's as heavy as a great power amp Sh kind of should be, right? You know, when you lift those classic power amps of the rack era, if you lift one and you're like, Whoo! that one's not going to sound that great. Uh, so it's a real amp and it weighs like a real amp, but it is that deep. They were so economical in how they structured uh, the build of it. It's all super tight. I'm going to show that picture one more time because I think that's really beautiful. Inside the GBG120 is 6L6s and EL34s. But you could put really kind of like co other combinations too, like uh, KT88s and 6550s. Like that would be a monstrous thing. I mean, that would get you up to the 120 watts for sure. In the, the EL34 6L6, it doesn't quite go to 120 watts. You won't miss it, honestly, unless you were playing opposite of the Scorpions directly in front of them. That's the only time you would need to get louder than what's coming out of the EL34s and 6L6s here. That leads me to this other concept is everything's on the front. You don't have to reach behind to adjust the gate level. You don't have to reach behind to change the power amp. Uh, settings. Everything is right here. And uh, Baskin's love of pro audio, and I don't mean like high fidelity speakers necessarily. I mean like SSLs, Neves, Manleys, all of that kind of cool classic studio gear. That shines through really because like the feel of the, the knobs is expensive. The buttons are like they're a joy to push, I gotta say. It's a joy to push. So let's throw on the rack camera here so you could see up close and I could walk through and show you some of the sounds here. One last thing I wanna mention is that it is mono. So it is a rack unit, but the power amp section is mono. So if you wanna go stereo, you would need to do like maybe a wet dry or a, another power amp like a Fryat power station or something for the secondary, the left and the right sort of side. Maybe you don't need to go stereo, I'm just saying because this thing's gonna sound really big. All right, let's dive in to the Zuta GBG120. I apologize for the PCM42 flashing. Let's give you the quick once over before I dive in deep into the channels. Everything is laid out, like I said, right on the front and very simply. Each channel has access to the gate. There's one gate, it's right here, but each channel has access and then you could turn it on or off individually for each of these channels. To access your channels, you obviously, you see these big buttons that'll get you through any of your four channels. They each have a gain, volume, bass, middle, and treble. 
This is sort of the master section over here. Uh, you have your depth and presence, and there's solo mode, which uh, it actually does a nice thing to the sound, which kind of like pushes it forward a little bit, aside from the volume. And then you have adjustable, a uh, little bit of an extra lift in your volume when you go to solo mode. Solo mode also has its own effects loop, so you can assign a, like a special delay just for when you go into solos. There's also a global effects loop, which can be series or parallel. You don't see that very often anymore. Most effects loops you'll run across are series, which means you'll have the preamp sound coming in, then you put your effects there, and then it goes to the power amp and it comes out the speaker. The way parallel works is you have your preamp coming in and it goes to the power amp and the speaker, but it's split off and has the effects and then they get blended together over here. It's a much more complicated process. You have to worry about phase. Well, you don't. <laughs> Zuta had to worry about phase and you know both of those things are controlled on the mix. So in parallel, mix is the blend of how much effect you're getting. And in series, it is the level of the send that it's sending to your effects processor. Also really nice that that's on front. The GBG has a fan in it, so fair warning. It is the quietest fan I've ever heard in an amplifier. Um, most of the time when I hear a fan in an amp, it's, it's just like, and you, there's a pitch to it. This is like the ASMR of amp fans. It's just like, it's a really good, sometimes I've, when I've been working, I just left it on and I totally forgot about it. And then you turn it off, you're like, oh, there was a fan. Believe me, when I use my old vintage rack stuff with those fans, you know when that fan is on and you can't wait to turn it off. So this standby switch goes from standby, you see, to AB. Now when, that's not class AB, that is referring to both sets of tubes, the A and the B set of tubes. In this case, this is shipping with EL34s and 6L6s. So then when you go to A, it is just 6L6s, and you go to B, it's just EL34s. So the wattage drops a little bit, obviously, when you're splitting the number of tubes. It's not humongously drastic, uh, so it's not like it's turning into a, a 10 watt amp. It's still super powerful. Just think of it as if you need maximum butt kickery output, the AB together is gonna give you that. It's also a big, big, broad sound. Now, if you sat through all that talking, you deserve a reward. Let's dive in and hear this. We're gonna go to channel one. Uh, I have the PCM42 in the effects loop. Should we turn that off, maybe? Maybe we'll turn it off in the beginning, yeah. All right, so, so you have a gain switch, which obviously will change the level of gain. And then you have this bass roll-off switch. It gets huge. It's like, becomes like a Ampeg SVT at that point. So if you're not gonna use the bass roll-off, you really have to trim back the bass. It's cool because it's a different sound. It's, it's rounder. Let's put on the PCM. Of course, you have your depth and your presence here that you can alter, but I'm pretty much going to leave these where they are. This little shape is a high-end lift, which is the bright switch, we'll say.
totally different guitar, very different sound. Maybe it's just as easy to add some extra gain there, right? And that makes it bigger. Or, let's get more. Now you can just look over here, maybe this is too much delay for you. Back to this power amp selection. It's a lovely, clean sound. Um, and then you get to tailor it kind of any which way you want. How much gain is on this? Let's see. Yeah, not, not too bad amount of gain. Super good. Channel two. This leads me to what I hear is the core sound of the GBG is muscular. I, I feel like it has a very muscular thing. It is tight, super tight. And you really, when you throw this through cabs and stand in front of it, the sound does not sag out at the bottom. It is like there at any volume. You like, you just want it louder? Okay, we'll put it there. Bap. It is really tight and masculine. You hear that it always has a really nice big bottom there too. Um, it's a little tougher to dial in thin sounds on it. I don't know if anyone was like, I wish I had an amp that sounded thin. Um, but maybe that's not for you. you know, if you want a big sound, it, this does, it's big sounding. Channel two has the most vintage vibes across the whole amp, I think. But to get there, you have to turn the knobs Sometimes that's scary, I understand, but this is designed like a classic piece of like mastering gear or something. Like you're allowed to turn the knobs and it does cool things. Like, like don't be afraid if the bass is at nine o'clock, it's okay. <laughs> There was another thing, did I mention this? There's this uh, kind of mysterious button under the power amp and it's a diode something or other, but I like it. It's got a nice sort of uh, airiness. Uh, it, like it brings an airiness into the mid range that I, I really like. <laughs> That's 
go to the EL34s. <laughs> Cutting off the high lift, what are those called? Bright switches, right? Let's see what happens if we just crank the treble here. Yeah, it's all, we're cool. And then let's see what happens if we turn off vintage mode. Oh. Gain goes bonkers, you get a lot more gain. I'm gonna turn off the gain and we'll start here and we'll rebuild. Quickly got like more chung 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 than the more vintagey vibe. Let's go straight up and down and see where we're at. A lot of bottom end, there's always a lot of bottom end. Not a gain if I just had access to a gate. Oh, yeah. Channel three, channel three, channel three. Again, channel 3 has a vintage mode, which I like because I think it tightens the bottom and sort of lifts the, the mid-range and the, that more cracking, maybe classic sort of British kind of vibe. Sorry, I had the gate off. Let's go to the EL34 mode. Back to 6L6s and EL34s. EL34s. Let's go no gain and no vintage mode and see where that leaves us.
Channel 3, you can do a lot of business on Channel 3 alone. It, it goes places. Smooth gain, endless sustain, uh, and it just... Like, I did break one of my cardinal rules, and I used a wah pedal, but I used it sort of in that, tried to use it in that Sykes way, where you're just kind of, like, using it to vocalize a little more instead of, like, a wanka wanka wanka. Um, it just seemed to, like, it was calling out for that sort of Sykes thing, and it just does that infinite sustain, especially with the, the Les Paul Custom. It just puts you in the mood, right? Channel 4. So Channel 4 has a lot of interesting little tweaky tweakies. Let me just go back to raw dog in it here. Channel 4 is a little more bitey, maybe, than Channel 3. You can pick which either one. You could really pick one or the other to be your lead or rhythm for, you know, more heavy stuff, uh, I think. But they both bring something different to the party, and it's uh, it's nice to play with. Now, Channel 4 has lots of options. You know, the gain is very low. I'm going to turn the gate back on. I'm sitting right. I mean, I'm inside the amp, so not the best place to be, but thank you, gate. There's a bass boost. There's this, I'm gonna turn that off. There's a mod, which is like, a, someone modded it. It's not like he added more gain because there's so much gain already. It's just a different flavor. <laughs> Here, it sort of lifted up in the, the mid-range. More bitey, sharper, um, thicker, broader, a little more in the direction of channel three without it. Now instead of a bright switch, this is more of like a presence bump. Really great if you're gonna low tune. I was looking around to see if I have anything I could tune even lower than this, but. <laughs> Yeah, just brought everything right back up. If you're a seven stringer, I think this is really a good thing there. Stuff. It does stuff for you. Really cool. Uh, oh, and there was a whole different, in the presence, there's a different presence switch. I'm going to go back to channel three. Maybe that will be the best place to hear this. Feels like it really just 
shoves everything forward a little more. I prefer it out, but it is an option. All right, you see how I turned on the effects loop and you only hear the repeat. That's because that's going series and I have the output to 100% on the PCM. Now, if you're in series, then you're gonna do blending somewhere else, All right? Now I could also do parallel, uh, but if I do parallel, I have to turn the output to 100%, otherwise I'm gonna be getting the dry signal again back through the effects unit. So now I have this blend. Dry. Oh my gosh, I think I covered everything on the front panel. That's amazing. Uh, let me show you the rear of the amp real quick, and then, uh, you know, we could go back to rocking out. The rear of the amp is one of the most straightforward things you'll ever see on a four channel amp. So you have your outputs, four, eight, 16 ohms. The XLR connector here is for the foot switch. Here is your inputs. Um, you can go in from the back and pass through. You could run a line from something else if you want to like reamp. And then here you have the two effect sends. You have your uh, big uh, effect send for everybody, and then you have your solo effect send. <laughs> King, that is the Zuta GBG120 in all of its four channels rack glory. Check it out. I'll put some links below. You could go look. And uh, yeah, I'm digging it. I'll show you more uh, later. But uh, thank you for watching. Go play some guitar. Check out the website. See y'all.